Google Fonts really is amazing. And you're probably used to just grabbing one of these fonts and then just declaring, hey, I want this one right here, grabbing this and adding it to the head of your HTML. The only trouble with that is two things. Number one, you don't get the speed that you get if you upload your own custom font and make sure that you're doing it with modern font stacks. And secondly, you also have to worry about the privacy and security concerns with using Google Fonts. There's actually some legal challenges to Google Fonts being used throughout the web that require you to do some stuff legally. So how do you get around those or how do you adjust for that? Well, that's what I'm going to show you today, how you can set up your own font face that you load up for users. And if you stick around to the end, I'll even show you how you can declare a local font file so that it will use whatever's on their system first and then only default to what you're uploading if they don't have it on their system. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. I will include a link to the finished code here on my GitHub when we're done, but you can see right now I've got a pretty nasty looking site and I actually just had ChatGPT spin this up, so I'm sure the CSS is kind of bad, but here we go. We can get something up and running so that we can actually work with it. Now, what I'm going to do first of all is download a font. Now, you can come over here to Google Fonts and just like download a family, for instance, and then add that to your project. What I'm going to do instead is come over to another site called Font Share that has some free fonts that you can also use. And let's just find, how about this one right here, the Schweitzer one or Switzer. And I can just download the family. You do have some font licensing things you need to pay attention to depending on what you download. But now I've got this downloaded and let's go ahead and add it to our actual project. So I'm going to open up my sidebar over here. We're going to add a folder here and this will just be called public. And then inside here, I'll have a fonts folder. Now, basically, this needs to be at the root of your directory, wherever you end up publishing your final build, so the root of your server. So a lot of times, build systems will have a public directory that will basically add all those files to the root of your server when you're done building. But for now, we're just going to mock it up like this and relatively reference that. So next, I'm going to go ahead and grab those fonts, and I'll drag them in. Give me just one moment. All right, so I've got all these here. I'm just going to drag them in. And out of the very many fonts that they gave me, I went into the web fonts in the folder from that downloaded font file there. And you can see that I've grabbed a couple different versions of the bold, bold italic, italic, and regular. Basically, these are different font types. And WFF2 is the most modern one and usually the smallest. That's basically the difference between these font types. But you can see here I've got uh, three versions of each so that we can basically fall back if a browser that visits our site doesn't support it. So now that I've got these, let's go ahead and secondly declare a font face. So if I come over here, just in my CSS up above where I would use it, I'm going to say font face and VS Code actually gives me a little start right here. But what I'm going to do is pull up the MDM docs just so you can follow along yourself. You can see here the first thing we have to do is, is declare this as a family name. So if I remember correctly, this was called Switzer or something like that. I can call this whatever I want because basically it's just what I'm going to reference in the body down here below. Then you'll notice next, I've got an SRC, and this is required, and I have to actually give it a single one or a list of different items it can load. Now, for right now, we're going to ignore this local one and just look at the URLs. Basically, it's going to start with the top one and try to download that, and if their browser doesn't support it, it will fall down the stack. So let's go ahead and say what I want is to download just the normal one. So I'll do a relative path in my public directory and then into fonts. And then finally, let's just grab the regular and let's start with the WFF2 since that's the one I prefer. You also notice that you can declare a format. This says the type of file it is. So we'll say format and this will just be in quotation marks here, WOFF2. So this is going to be basically my default type. Now the other thing I need to do is tell it basically what weight and what style this font family is. And if I were to come over here, you can see that. So I've got font style right here, and I've also got font weight. So we'll say font style first of all. So my font style for this will be normal. And then font weight, I can call this whatever I want. So for instance, I could say 400 or 600. Obviously you want it to be somewhere close to what you're using. You could also just say normal as well, but let's declare this as something like 400. So what I've done is I've grabbed just my regular type I've only given it one of the three different versions we have to start with. And I've said, this is my normal style, so it's not italic. And then I've said, here's the weight. So this is my standard weight. So what I can do now is come in here to the body and say font family. And this will now be set to my Schweitzer or Switzer, whatever that is. So if I jump back over this way, you'll see that this is now actually being pulled in. It's only ever using the WOFF2. And it's also only ever using the 400 weight or this, this font face declaration. So just to show you what this would look like, if I comment this out, there's the ugly one, and this is the nice one. Now you do want to give it some kind of fallback, 
sans serif is at least a basic version. So it starts with this and then downloads this and swaps it out as it needs to. Usually you also want to provide other ones that they might have on their system as well, but uh, this is at least a starting point for a fallback stack. Now, to make sure it's actually coming in, I'm going to open up the dev terminal, click on network, and make sure font is selected. Then I'll refresh, and you'll see that it is actually being pulled in. It tells you the size, how long it took, 9 milliseconds, not too bad, so it pulls all this in. Now, let's look at a couple other things, and then we'll declare different versions, like for italic and bold and all that. So let's come over here. You'll notice that not only do we have a font weight and a font style, but if I move back up, the other thing I mentioned is that you can give it a fallback stack. So what I'm going to do is actually grab this right here, and just add a comma, and then we'll just add two more here. And I'm gonna add this as grabbing the first one, hit Command D, and erase that to just say WOFF. -F. And then we'll do the same thing here, TTF. And those just correspond to the names of the files I have here. Generally speaking, this is the smallest, the next smallest, and this is the largest. The, the, the browser support is really good for this and for this, so you'll probably almost never load this. And you'll notice that if I come back over this way, I open back up the network tab and I refresh, it's still only gonna download this one because it actually works on this browser, so these never get run. So you're safe to add as many fallbacks as you need, knowing that only the ones you actually use will be downloaded. Okay, so now we've got a browser stack fallback, we've got this font family set, it's being used in our body, we've got our normal style, our font weight, how do we declare this as like an italic version of this? What I'm gonna do is come over here and we'll do, actually, let's just copy this down right here. So I'm gonna copy all this down. In addition to the regular, we also have an italic version. So if I grab this first regular, double click on that, hit Command D, Command D, Command D, and I think that was just called uh, italic, yeah. Italic, like that. Now all I have to do is switch this out and say that this should be my normal weight, that 400, with an italic font style. You see that this actually gets pulled in here and is now working properly. Now I can do the exact same thing for my bold. So let's go ahead and copy this down and we'll do the same thing. So in this case, I'm gonna change this, all these to bold, because I think that's what that was called. Yeah, and then the next one right here, these are all gonna be called bold italic. Now in order for the browser to know which one to select, I need to give this a different weight. I can just actually declare this as bold and whenever I use that declaration in my CSS, it will use this font face and this font face depending if it's italic or not. Or I can also give it an actual number like 700 and 700. Now, if I come back over this way and I refresh, you'll see that it's pulling in the bold, the italic and the regular. I must not have any bold italic anywhere in the site. And that's something else to note that it will only actually download the font when it needs it. And evidently those are the only three I'm using. So this one's never being used. All right, now a couple other things to note here. This font weight right here is important. So if I come over here and I call this something like, I don't know, uh, 200 perhaps, and then I jump down here and I say the font weight needs to be 200, then you'll notice that it basically uses that same font because all it's doing is saying, hey, which font weight should I use? And it looks up here. And since the font family is inherited, it's already knows to look under Schweitzer. It finds it up here and says, hmm, this is 200, I'll use this. It doesn't care what the file name is called or anything like that. Same thing here. So let's say I changed this to, I don't know, like pizza. All right, so if we change this to pizza right here and I change this to pizza, you'll notice that it's, it's still using that because it basically says, hey, I'm gonna look for the pizza one. It doesn't really care what the file is called. So all those naming things are important. Okay, so one other thing to note, and that is that you can actually default to a system font on their machine. So I'm gonna install Switzer right now on my system and then be right back with you. All right, so I went ahead and installed it on my machine. I'm gonna open up my network tab over this way and then we'll refresh. You see all three of those coming in. Now, I happen to know that if I were to jump over here, this Switzer right here is installed using Fontbook, which is how you install it on macOS. But I've got a bunch of different styles, regular, italic. Now. The only tricky thing is you have to kind of guess exactly how this will be installed on somebody's machine. So if I'm pretty sure this is going to be called the regular, I could come inside here and just declare a local. And then this would be the name I think it'll be called, which is Schweitzer uh, Normal. Now let's see if I guessed that correctly, or regular, I think that's what we said, regular. Okay, so let me come back over here and you'll see that now it's not loading that because it's actually using my system font instead. So same thing, if you know that this is going to install this down here, and you think this is gonna be called italic. Now I can refresh, refresh over here, and now only the bold is being pulled in. One more time, let's go ahead and switch both of these out as well. And down here, I think this will be bold italic. 
and we'll save and refresh. And now no fonts are being downloaded because I'm saying, hey, if they've got this installed and it's named exactly this, use this instead. Otherwise, fall back to these as well. It is important that this goes first because it will try to use that local font first. So that's how you declare your own font faces. Now, we have gone ahead and grabbed one, two, three, and four different fonts that they have to download. There is another way to use fonts, and that is to use the more modern variable fonts. If you're interested in that, let me know in the description. I'm happy to do a video on how you can use variable font faces in your website. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this was a big help. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.